Mm. Hi there, hi, and welcome to another GM chat sessions. This is when I, as a game master, sit down and have a friendly chat with you about anything to do with game mastering. And in this sort of like mini series of videos, I'm going to be talking about behind the scenes. What actually happens, you know, behind the scenes in between um, adventures and sessions. And this video is going to be all about ideas for adventures. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. So what am I going to be talking about in this Game Master chat? Well, I'm going to be talking about behind the scenes, about how I get the ideas for my adventures. Now, this first started off as a blog post on my blog, um, inwills.co.uk. And by all means, go along and have a read at the original. But I'm going to change it slightly and bring it more up to date and share it with you guys today. As always, if you have enjoyed this video or any aspect of my channel, then please consider liking, commenting or subscribing. Just liking the video really does support the channel and also contributes to achieving my dream. Now, I haven't decided what to put behind me or anything like this in these videos, so it's going to be a bit of trial and error. So behind me at currently is part of our game session. So please have a look at those on YouTube as well. You can just um, click in the actual play video list. OK, then. So how do I make my adventures or initially, how do I find out ideas? Right. Straight off the bat, I have a confession to make, okay? Because I do actually use a lot of pre-made adventures. Now, before you all go, ah, gasp, shock, horror, I do have a reason for this. I am holding down a full-time job, um, as well as GMing campaigns, plus um, tweeting, blogging, Twitch, live streaming on Twitch. So it's my life is quite hectic. So sometimes a pre-made adventure is really useful. I also think it's very useful if you're just getting used to a system. So when I first did my first Starfinder campaign or series of adventures, I actually used a pre-made adventure there. It gives me an idea of the background material and how certain aspects work. Um, in the Mithras campaign that I'm um, currently running as a game master, I actually used a pre-made um, first adventure for that and learned how traps worked, etc. So to start off with, I have nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with um, pre-made adventures and I do use them quite a lot. But if I'm not running a pre-made adventure, then where do I find my inspiration from? Well, the first thing I have to say are maps. I love maps. I could spend for hours searching Pinterest or across the internet looking at maps. And a, a lot of the time, these maps actually start my inspiration off. I must admit, I've never learned how to digitally create my own map. So if anybody has any really good sites to follow or videos about this, then please do pop them in the comments below so I can check them out. I do follow a person on Twitter called Two Minute Tabletop. These are excellent maps and there are there's some free versions as well, but it's well worth paying the extra dollars for some of the other maps that are available. Of course, I use Roll20 as my live streaming platform for my role playing games. So I buy a lot of maps from them as well. And I often just spend some time browsing through the marketplace, looking at the maps. I often find a map and then think, wow, I can create that adventure. An example for this would be, um, I found a whole load of forest maps and in the Mithras campaign that I'm running at the moment, that was the inspiration for the Shrike. 
and which was a sort of banshee that lived in a forest and actually um, hung her victims corpses onto branches hanging from the tree a bit like the shrike bird is i think the shrike bird is not commonly known as the butcher bird because it has a similar um it does a similar thing with its prey now as well as creating my own adventures and gming campaigns etc the other thing i do do is that i watch um, adventures on Twitch and I have to be honest here I tend to magpie a whole load of ideas and I might be watching a campaign or a series of adventures and it might not be in the same setting as what IGM but I sort of like think oh that's an interesting idea and I capture those um, settings or those ideas in a lot of the time I call it magpieing uh, I steal those silver objects. Uh, I'm not too sure whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. And I know I never say thank you to any of the Twitch um, streamers when I do magpie their um, ideas. So can I just say formally now, thank you, everyone. You've been great. Um, I do capture them. I have a task manager system called OmniFocus on my Mac and on my devices. And I try to capture them straight away because if I don't, I just know I will forget about them and then come to my next adventure. So I do have uh, sort of like an area with all these great ideas written down, just waiting to be developed. Oh, if you are a game master like me, then you will be aware that your brain never, ever, ever switches off. You know, you're always listening out for new ideas, seeing things. And I must admit, uh, a lot of my ideas come about through everyday um, occurrences. I might be walking down the street, I might be listening to a book, I might be watching a TV show and all of a sudden something will happen and I think that's fantastic. Uh, I really want to utilise that. Or um, I often see a character or hear about a character or watch a person. I'm a great people watcher and I see a character, see a person and think, oh, that will make an excellent NPC. And I do, if you watch the Mithras campaign, there's a cartographer called Sylvester McCoon and he was an inspiration and I made up the NPC and actually made a whole load of adventures just around Sylvester. And I always put him back in so the players come back and meet him over and over again. So even um, everyday occurrences or ideas for NPCs actually generate some of my adventure ideas and finally um, this is a bit of a strange one because I get my ideas from my campaign yes I know it sounds a bit strange now there was a time that I was running um, I was GMing three different campaigns I had a Call of Cthulhu adventure set in Victorian London I had uh, a Starfinder I had all four. I had a, a Shadowrun campaign made up in my own campaign setting called Metro, and I had Mithras um, on the cam on the continent of Odes, and I had all these campaigns running. And um, sadly, I'm just down to one now: the Odes campaign for Mithras. That's the only one, and um, with players' demands on life, etc. The rest have sort of like petered out. However, I must say that. I get ideas from my campaign worlds and I actually think about campaigns items and think about brotherhoods or think about um, companies in Shadowrun or think about gang members or brotherhoods and orders and this actually generates ideas for me and I sort of like start to develop them and the, the brotherhood say or the order or the company and say how will I be able to get the players to engage with this company and that actually allows me to generate a whole load of other ideas as well and it often allows them to become patrons or you know they they join these brotherhoods so actually having a campaign world actually generates ideas for me as well now i'm sure there's a lot of other places that i actually get my ideas from but just 
to sort of like sum up, I really think the important thing is to capture those ideas and having a system that actually allows me to grab those ideas and store them. Um, I use OmniFocus, as I mentioned beforehand, but things like Google Keep is just as good as long as you get them while they're hot, so to speak, and get them written down. So I'm really interested um, how you um, where do you get your ideas from for um, creating an adventure? Where do they come from? As always, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. So please take the time just to have a quick type and let me know. And that's it. That's the end of this bite size Game Master Chat. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's given you something to work on and a, a slight peek behind the scenes of how I operate my campaigns and adventures. Next time we're going to be looking at how I prepare the adventure. So do come along and see that and don't forget to press that bell button to get notification when I next go live. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful week or month and Please, please, please carry on GMing. See you later, guys. Bye.